the truth about electronic art stock. You know, this one's kind of interesting because like you got a stock uh, and you're entering kind of this like overarching market downturn. And the question is like, with all these industry sectors, you got like a lot of stuff that, that's having some declines. Um, and especially with the coronavirus, like there's some people that are just like staying inside all day um, because they can't go to work or just because like they're being forced to work at home or they're staying at home. And you have like literally tons of colleges across the world like canceling, closing the doors, um, schools going like away. And, and, and the question is, when you have like such a big downturn, is, is this gonna really, is there is gonna be a good thing for the gaming industry or is it, is it gonna be a bad thing for the gaming industry? Um, for those of you who are, who are born under a rock, I mean EA, they make like basically like all of these amazing games, right? So the question is, like, are they gonna sell more of these games? Are they gonna have more profits with these games or, or not in the, in the coming, um, you know, coming years? Uh, and it's an interesting question because, like, you've got like direct sales, and then you've also got like sort of upsells in like free-to-play games, right? Where you have like in-game items and stuff like that. And, and the question is like, is are people gonna be spending more money or are they spending less money with um, these games during a recession? Uh, and you know, just think about it in terms of like spendable income. People have more money to spend, or less money to spend. People have less money to spend. That could really, really hurt sales. That could also really hurt, um, you know, in-game purchases. And so that's kind of what I want to dive into here is, is figure out um, really what's going on with this. And the reason why is because if you take a look at the stock price, there's something really, really interesting happened um, in the in the past, I think, year or so. And basically, what it looks like is you've got this giant run up and then you have this consolidation at like the 50 monthly moving average which looks like really 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 nice and what's cool about this is if you, I don't know if you guys know this um it's called sort of like a, a bear flag basically what you have is you have like this downturn right and then there's this really important thing that happens right after this downturn and it, it's a bunch of consolidation and it, it just goes up and goes down it goes up and goes down it goes up and down and basically what you want to see is you want to see it kind of break out of this uh, this consolidation phase, and then as soon as it breaks out, all of a sudden, basically you take this height right here, and you take this height, you kind of add it to the breakout point, um, so kind of say like like that, and um, and that's kind of your price target. So you would basically you short right here, stop loss right here, targets down here, um, and it's the same thing if you're gonna go you know up. It, it's it's very very similar. You go up, and then you just have a bunch of consolidation, and then. Um, you want to see it break out, and as soon as it breaks out, you basically take this height right here, add that height to the top, wherever it breaks out, and that's going to be your profit target, your stop loss right here, entries right here, targets right here. Um, really, really simple setup. This is um, bullish, right? this is a bull flag, um, and then over here we have a bear flag. Uh, it's a really, really, really awesome setup. Works really, really, really well, and uh, it's just super nice and consistent. And so that's kind of the, the basis of what really got me interested in this. So if you look at it, I mean, it's not that difficult to see uh, that you basically got the setup uh, of a bear flag here, especially if you kind of zoom out to the weekly and um, you know, get rid of kind of some of these indicators, which I want to be honest, aren't particularly helpful with this company. Um, if we just zoom out a little bit, we can kind of see, you know, here's the run up, here's the drop down. It dropped from like about, I'd say 140 conservatively to, you know, 100 and maybe 90 conservative, it's about a $50 drop. So like if they break below like 85 or so, I think pretty conservatively, they should go to about probably like 50, $56. Um, I mean, that's kind of what you would see based off of this setup. And it's, it's exactly what you see right here. It's not like that difficult. And so that was really, I think the big thing that got me interested in this stock um, is like, if the setup works out well, you're looking potentially uh, just on a pure equity side, a gain of about 50%. And on an options play, we'll look at it soon, but it, it's significantly leveraged. Um, and all you really have to do is just take this right here, take it as a play in consolidation, and then basically just take this exact same amount that you start with over here, subtract it from the breakout point, and you've got yourself a lot of money right here that is just waiting uh, kind of to, to, to be taken out of the, the stock um, with a pretty conservative stop loss. I mean, you, you know, you just, you just, I would rather see it come down here and have like a really nice breakout so you know like pretty much uh, kind of a guaranteed drop um, or as much as close to that as you can get. And then the moment you get there, it's, it's just straight down, right? And so 
that's kind of um, the leading principle and, and what really got me into this stock is because, like if you look at the options on this you can get you know June expirations at 85 strike uh, for you know give or take five bucks um, so if they go to 50 you're looking at basically um, a 7x return on your investment, which is, is phenomenal. Um, it's really, really good. Uh, so that's kind of the guiding principle and what, and what got me into, into this investment. So the first thing you're going to see when you look at the stock is their PE is very low. Uh, it's like 10. Uh, but the second thing you're going to see is what kind of makes me not care about the PE, and that's the beta. And basically what you're looking at here is a stock that is very, 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 very highly correlated to the S&P 500. Uh, if we kind of change this to a line chart and we add a comparison to the S&P 500, you're going to see really kind of simply that this stock, you know, you know for better or worse, uh, it, it's pretty closely correlated to the SPY. Um, and it, it's outperformed it, like don't get me wrong, it's outperformed the market exceedingly well in the past couple of years. Uh, but if we kind of take a, take a zoom back, you can kind of see like, you know, the market goes up, this stock goes up. The market goes down, this stock goes down. And I think probably the best view of it is, is sort of like right about here, starting from 2014 on. Um, you can kind of see the, the, this is pretty highly correlated to the market. It's just a little bit more volatile, um, which is why the base is a little bit over one. So like my thing with this is like as we enter a recession, the market's about to drop a bunch in the next couple of years, I mean, at least the next year. Um, that's going to be really, really nice for a position shorting EA because EA is, you know, has tended to follow the market um, very, very, very well. And so you see the market's dropping, EA's dropping, and you know, presuming that the market continues to fall since we're in a confirmed bear market, and the shortest bear market in existence has been four months, which is probably not going to be this case. Um, we're looking probably at about a year and a half or two, just as a guess. Um, you know, this this really does validate that this stock is is, is kind of going is going down with the market, um, which is it's really, uh, really, really, really good. Which is, I mean, just it's really nice uh, to see that. And so, those are sort of the first two things you see looking at this. Um, if you look at it from a revenue standpoint, they're like doing sort of well. They've had to cancel some of their new game releases, um, but I mean, they're still making a lot of money. They're making billions of dollars a year, which is pretty phenomenal. Um, I mean, they, they make a lot of money. The thing is, like, they're just so big. They've been around since 89. They've been around for, what, 30 years almost, 30 plus years. Um, and if we take a look at the financials tab, it's going to be really, really well reflected. They're making um, top line of about $6 billion a year, which I mean, the question is, you know, if everyone's stuck inside or if the coronavirus or there's a recession, blah, 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 what's going to happen to their financials? And um, to answer that question, I think the best thing you can do is look at what the stock did. Uh, if we kind of get rid of this comparison, the S&P, or actually I could just go over to uh, Thinkorswim, it'd be a lot easier to show you. If we look at what the stock did in 2008, we can see um, these guys went from 47, 50 bucks to, to 20 bucks. I mean, that's, that's really, it's really, it's really bad. Um, and so uh, I'm thinking we kind of see something similar to that uh, now, uh, just based off of, you know, kind of where the targets are. Basically, the, the price here decreased by, by factor, like it lost 60% of its value. Um, and so that would give us a target initially of, of 75 based off of a high 150, but that's a really, really extended, extended, extended high. Um, and just based off this setup, like there's no doubt, like, uh, like I think 50 bucks is, is a pretty, you know, 55 maybe, um, really could, could be a reasonable target for, for this company. If they break out of this wedge, break, they go below like 87, um, stop loss at like probably 110. The question is, are they gonna go down? Are they gonna bounce and then come back down again? We'll, we'll get to that in just a moment um, when we talk sort of about like what the entry point should be with this. But just from an overarching standpoint, like these guys are right on their 200 weekly and they're like right about, I mean, they had a death cost. I don't know what else to tell you. They're 50 moving average across 200 moving average. Like they've had a death cost. I just want you guys to understand. The last time they had a death cross, the stock went from 50 bucks to, to, to 20. Um, and that was in 2008, and um, and then I guess they had a they no that's not they didn't cross in 2012, um, yeah. So the last time they had a death cross was in 2008, and they just had another one. Like I don't know what else to tell you. Like that's that's a crash, okay? Like um, that that's a really 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 strong indicator. If we take a look at the monthly, we're gonna see a, a very very similar story. Last time they crashed below the 50 monthly, which is equivalent to the 200 weekly. Um, was in 2008, and um, and they crashed, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. Um, now, obviously, they've consolidated a little bit, which is great, and they've they've gone into this flag setup, which is great. Um, 
but I mean, it's, 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 it's kind of like right there, you know? Um, something to take note of that's kind of interesting is in the, after the dot-com bubble, they didn't actually crash very much. Um, they went down to their 50, but they didn't actually cross the 50 monthly, and they stayed above it. So, like, that would be one of the situations where you would ask yourself, is it going to do something like that? And my answer to that question is most likely not, because if you look at the chart, the 50 moving average never crossed the 200, so they never had a death cross. Um, but when they did have a death cross, you know, the stock plummeted, and that's exactly what we see happening right now. Um, and so just like, you know, even though they're making tons of money, they're making tons of money in an industry that's very, very, like, consumption reliant. And if people stop having extra money to blow on video games, um, or in-game items and free-to-play games, then, you know, it's like general economic slowdown is probably gonna hit, like, you know, consumer cyclicals or consumer, um, you know, preference or, or just basic consumption that they don't really need uh, faster than, than a couple of other industries and sectors like that are utilities or, or that are really needed. I mean, stuff like that, this is really, you know, just like sugar on top of the cake. Like, you don't go to the store and buy an EA game um, because if, if you can't afford to, to, to put a meal on the table, it just doesn't happen. Um, and I think that, that's kind of some of the struggles you might see with these guys, which is why uh, likely they've been canceling some of their game releases. They haven't been updating, um, I think, NBA, or they haven't been updating a lot, a lot of these games. Um, at least they've declared they're not going to do it for 2020, uh, which, I mean, if you think about it, it's like, well, why do you think that is? Um, and and, and I'm thinking a bunch of it is going to come from just a general economic slowdown. Um, now, usually I would, I would want to think about like, what other people think about the stock. I would want to say, like, am I, is this really like, a valid opinion? Is this really something that makes sense? Um, first of all, never trust analyst estimates on your clients. They're all wrong. They're so, like, there's like, never any validity to any of it. <laughs> uh, the numbers out here are awful. What I care about more than anything is, is very, very, very simple. It's, it, it's like, not a difficult equation. It's supply right, and demand. So who's buying the stock? And who's selling the stock? Like that's really almost the only thing that moves a company's stock um, is who's buying and who's selling. And obviously, since the price has gone down so much, there's a lot of people selling. But I decided, like, what would be the best place to figure out what's going on with it? Um, and so what I decided to do is, is look at the insider trading. And this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this chart up, and I'm going to pull it up. Um, next to the stock chart so you can kind of see some correlation between the two um, because th there's some pretty important numbers just to, to see here that I think are really important now the first thing I want to point out to you is um, about a month ago uh, a little bit over a month and a half ago uh, I, I was trading and I, I saw EA on the dark pool screener and basically what happened is somebody sold uh, 1.5 million shares on February 2nd uh, I think it was 106, yeah, 106. So basically somebody sold, give or take, 150, 160 million dollars worth of this stock uh, right here, 2-2. Two -two. They sold it right, right here after they had a little bit of drop one day from 112 to 107. And um, basically somebody dumped like hundreds of millions of dollars of this stock, which is a very good indicator that this point right here that we're looking at right here is this peak right here on this chart. Um, is, this, is this peak on the flag? Because like I said, somebody sold $150 million of the stock. They probably knew something that I didn't know about why this would be the peak of the, of the flag. Um, that's the first thing I saw. The second thing I saw is if you look at the insider trading for the past three months, there's been one sad soul who's bought the stock, and there's been 32 people that have sold the stock. Uh, and if you look at the past 12 months, there's been one sad soul who bought stock and 121 people that sold the stock. So by a factor of 120 to 1, every single person inside of EA that is required to report their trades to the SEC has sold the hell out of this company. Now, to make, allow you to understand that, like this was a year ago, and this is today, give or take, and everyone in this time frame has sold the stock. Um, and the number of shares bought by this one sad guy was about 400,000. The number of shares sold was about 1.8 million. Um, and so you have you know, 1.8 divided by 0.4, it's about a 4.5x, about five times more people are selling the stock inside the company than are buying the stock inside the company. Um, and we can see the, the guy who bought it, um, he was, I guess it, it looks like this guy who um, did, I think, it said 300,000 in the past three months. 
Um, and so a couple of guys, it looks like they were executing options, executing options. What I want to see is a direct buy order. Um, and so if we take a little bit of a deeper look, options execution, really basic. These employees, they get paid in options and they have to execute the options and turn them into money. So the options get issued and then they get paid with the options and then the options turn into money for them. So they're not actually like physically buying the options. Um, they're getting paid with the options. And, it, and it's just a form of payment for them, like getting paid in stock. So it's like if you got paid in stock, like you wouldn't like have intentionally bought the stock, you would have just been paid in it. So it's not like an actual buy. Um, and so that's kind of uh, what we see with a vast bulk of all these trades. These are all options executions, options executions, options executions. And um, you just see the same thing over and over and over. You have tons and tons of people that are, sell, that are executing these options, they're getting free shares basically. Um, 26 a share is a pretty damn good price for an options execution. So that's the thing, right? Like when I say options execution, when I say getting paid in an option, what I mean by that is like this was in 720. So this was uh, kind of when the stock was, I guess, uh, 719, this is when the stock was at, I would say, 80, 90 bucks. Basically, these guys are getting paid options that are worth 20, that are called, like, calls at 20, and then they're getting, like, $60 in value just as, like, free money as payment for their services. So these aren't, like, options where they're, like, buying and they're expecting it to go up. These are options where, like, they're taking a $100 bill and they're paying $20 for it, and then they're immediately selling that. Um, it, it's not like they're actually investing in the stock. They're just getting paid with options contracts that have massive, massive amounts of inherent value. Uh, but when we transfer over to the sell side, we look at the sells, all of a sudden we see automatic sell, automatic sell, automatic sell, automatic sell, 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 automatic sell, sell, sell. None of this shit is options. And when I say auto, and there's two reasons why, but the, the first thing I want to talk about, when it says automatic sell, that's what we call a stop loss. That means the price went down so much that they wanted to get the hell out. And that's what every single person owns this stock is gonna say as soon as it hits like 87 bucks. Um, is, is they wanna get the hell out because they know that's happening. Um, and, and the same thing here, you got these guys selling. It, they're selling because they think the stock's gonna go down. They're selling at 110 because the stock is not worth 110. And you can see that in, in the price. It's not like a difficult formula. Um, and so here, I mean, it really, really, really uh, kind of confirmed my, my, my uh, suspicions about this company. Um, and their financials. I mean, like the numbers look great, but everyone's selling the stock. Like I don't care how shiny your um, your golden like plate is. If everybody's selling it, it can be the best thing in the world. But if everyone's selling it, it doesn't matter. You can have a stock that's making like billions of dollars a quarter, and all they do is increase the revenues by fifty percent a year. But if everybody's selling it because it's Enron, the stock's still gonna go down. It's not like a, a tough formula, it's just supply and demand. Like the underlying company and the underlying financials, like they matter, but you know, you can have a company that is only making money, only make more, 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 more money, and more money, and more money, and more money, and more money. But at the end of the day, the money the company makes isn't gonna determine its stock price. Like yes, they are correlated, and yes, they are related, and yes, more money, should theoretically mean a higher stock price. But at the end of the day, the stock price is not determined by the amount of money that the underlying company makes. The stock price is determined by buying and selling. That's the only thing that matters. And the company can be reporting more and more and more money, but if everybody's selling, then the stock is going to go down. Uh, similarly, the company can be losing tons of money, but if everybody's buying, the stock is still going to go up. And this is what we saw with tech companies in uh, like the, the dot-com bubble. The companies were losing tons and tons and tons of money. They were literally going out to dinner and pay, getting like $2,000 dinners for like their entire staff and then paying for it in stock, which was like the funniest thing ever. And the stock would go up the next day, not because they made money, but because people thought they would make money, and so they bought. And we kind of have the opposite of that situation occurring right now with electronic arts. Electronic arts, they're making tons, tons of money, they do a great job, but the stock is going down if people are selling. And you know, they can make a hundred million dollars, uh, you know, ten million dollars next quarter. If people still sell, it, it's not gonna actually matter. Like, yes, it should influence whether or not people buy or sell, but the numbers on the page, the numbers on the paper, the, the, the numbers in plain sight show that people are dumping this stock left and right hundreds of thousands of shares worth. That is, um, 
you know, not much compared to the 1.5 million that got sold at 107, uh, but it's still like uh, a gigantic bulk of the stock uh, is being dumped on. If you look at the key statistics, the float here is only a, what, 288 million. So that's, you know, it's about 10% of the float just sold. Um, and I think it reflects, you've got a really, really low short percent of float ratio. And that's honestly, like, in a, in a, like a lot of the stocks we've been looking at lately have had massive short percent of float ratios. I like to see low short percent of float ratios because when you have a low short percent of float ratio, it means that most people think the stock is going to go up. And most people are usually wrong. And so when you see a really low short percent of float ratio, like 1%, 2%, this is a really, really good indicator that the stock's about to go down a bunch because no one's expecting it. And what that means is the options are gonna be super cheap because no one's expecting it. And the volatility is gonna be low because no one's expecting it. And it's not priced in to the time value of the contracts, which is gonna make it a really, really good play um, for, for, for those puts and for the trades. Um, and so, I mean, everything about this just looks really, really nice. And yes, you've got quarterly earnings growth, but if the economy crashes, it's not gonna matter how much money they make, they're still gonna be screwed up the butt. Uh, and, and that's kind of what the, the big takeaway is here is, I mean, they, they are a solid company in a crappy economy with a really, really, really difficult to escape from technical setup. And I think that's really gonna be their demise here is their high correlation to markets. They have a phenomenal profit margin, 50% profit, 23% operating. I mean, everything about it looks great. At the end of the day, it's just a contraction in the market. And I think these guys are gonna come down alongside with it. Um, and it gives you a really great opportunity to make a you know, low risk, a high reward trade that could be worth a boatload um, with, with the right investments. So I think that's kind of the most important to look at right now. With that said, uh, one of the last things we can look at here uh, is their balance sheet. If we look at their book value, kind of liquidation of it, um, we're looking at about 25 bucks a share. So I think you know, multiple of that by two is 50 bucks, which, which kind of validates that $50 target. Um, $100 stock on a $25 book value is kind of pretty extended. Uh, if we look through the report, we're gonna see basically, you know, these guys, they freaking make video games. Um, it's like not that tough. They've been making video games for a long time. The people that direct the company have been there for a long time because they make billions of dollars and are worth tons and tons and tons of money. It, it's not like a difficult, like, company really to, to understand and talking about why all they why they're getting paid so much <laughs> um i always love it when they spend the first like 40 pages of a report talking about executive compensation because it shows that they like literally could give zero fucks about the shareholders um and are focusing exclusively on themselves before they even talk about the underlying financials and audits which is kind of not a great thing um but anyway that's kind of what we have here um but then they get some FAQs and about the annual meeting, um, and about 100 pages in, I think we 80 pages in, we get finally get the the K1, which is nice. Um, and going through here, you can see basically these guys are competition, like they're dealing with the video game world. So like Activision, Take Two, Ubisoft, Bethesda, Epic Games. I mean, there are a lot of companies in the space. There's a lot of competition in the space. There's a lot of video games that exist. And so it kind of makes sense that they're going to have some pretty stiff competition. But even with that, they still have really, 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 really good margins because they're selling something that costs them a very minimal amount to actually sell. Like you print a DVD or you, you send it over the internet and bam, you have a video game. And then if you want to play online, you have to pay extra. You pay a monthly subscription to play online. So their online costs are like covered by subscriptions and they have a subscription revenue as well. Um, and so that kind of really, really does help their business. The thing is though, think about video gamers or target demographic, like those are not individuals that want to pay a hundred bucks a year to subscribe to some video game by any means whatsoever. And so their target demographic like doesn't want to pay for what they have, which means an economic slowdown could really really, really hurt uh, their business. They don't have that free cash flow anymore to, to do that. Um, with that said, they've been doing really well compared to the markets. Um, I mean, but now they're trying to curve down. So the question is, are they gonna crash or not when the markets crash? Um, obviously that was, this was a, a year ago. So this is before they got, the, I, I'm pretty sure, because right now they're, they were like at 80. So, so they're like way down here right now. So they actually kind of have crashed below the market. So the question is how low are they gonna go um, and the markets have gone down with them, so it's, it's not like it's just them going down. Um, really get everybody getting screwed here, which is interesting. 
Um, one thing I want to look at though is, is recurring revenue because I think recurring revenue could be the one thing that could kind of put like a little slate in this plan. Um, if we just kind of skim through the rest of this report, all we really see is you know basically uh, the, the books and, and the financials that we've already seen. Um, and the goodwill, I'm sure, comes from you know them having all these brands that they own and they lease out, and um, you know they make a lot of money. It's not that tough to to understand. Um, but if we look at like subscriptions, or maybe I don't know if they would say subscriptions or recurring revenue. Here we go, right here. Um, so yeah, they're 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 focused on including subscriptions with what they do. They're focused on expanding their subscription base, which is pretty important because that's going to be a bulk of their recurring revenue, which is going to be a lot of the valuation of the company is going to come from subscriptions. Um, and they talk about it here. I want to see if they like actually talk about the numbers behind the subscriptions, uh, which is really, I think, going to be one of the most important things in, in uh, driving in shareholder value. Uh, and it looks like, you know, they're focusing on it. But again, this idea of price is really difficult um, because of their target pricing, like the target audience um, like doesn't really want to pay for the subscription. So a lot of their stuff is just free to play based off of upsells. And then the question is, are they still going to sell a lot of those upsells if the market or if the overall economy starts to have a slowdown? Yeah, okay, so right here, live services, I think are probably the equivalent of subscriptions on the balance sheet. Uh, and we can see, you know, three times their full game downloads is, is brought in in subscription revenue. Um, so a bulk of the revenue comes from subscriptions, again, which could really, really start to get hurt with an overarching market downturn, uh, because revenue from those is not going to be uh, really as, as, as stable and sustainable. Uh, I don't know what, what happened to the document here, uh, but I think we're still going to see kind of the same thing where they're getting paid royalties, yes, uh, but the question is, is what's going to happen with the recurring revenue? And you know, it's kind of a nitpicky thing, but if the recurring revenue dries up, like this company is, is going to lose a significant chunk of its value overnight, uh, like without a doubt. So I think that's kind of one of your, your bigger risks here. Um, so with that said, what I see with EA is, is a pretty basic play. You're looking at about a six-month option swing on puts. Um, uh, if you want to, I'd say conservatively, like entry points, like when it kind of hits like 87 or something, um, target of like 50, 55. I would say probably the smartest thing you could do here, if you're looking at like a maybe a five month out play, is to do kind of like June's or September's would give you a little bit of extra time. Um, with a target of 50, like hell, you could get like 70 puts. Um, they're about 250 here. They're about 250, three bucks here. Um, maybe 80s. 80s are like four bucks. Uh, let me bust out my uh, my calculator real quick. Here it is. Um, if you want to look at just the net return on these investments, and obviously this will change kind of when you're doing it, so make sure that you kind of look at this again. But if we say conservative, like a 55 price target, and let's say conservative, we, we, we look at September puts, um, and we look at maybe look what, like $1.50 for these. Um, so that's an inherent value of six divided by $1.50. That's about a four X return. If we look at like the 65, you're looking at about $2. So we'll say two with an inherent value of say 10, you're looking at about a 5x return. Um, 10 divided by two is five. Um, if you look at the 70s, you're looking at about a $3.20 entry with an inherent value of about 15. Um, so that you're gonna see um, about the same thing, about a 4.6x return. Uh, and then with the seven, 75s, I think it's probably the highest I would go, like 75 or 80. You're looking at an inherent value of about 20 with a price of about four, you're looking at about a 5x return. Uh, and then the 80s um, are about four bucks, 420. And you're gonna have an inherent value of about 25 on that, or 420. So you're looking at about a, probably a 6x return on the 80s. So I think the 80s are probably gonna be sort of your best bet here. Um, the 85s would be worth 30, but you're still gonna put six into them, it's only a 5x return. It's only gonna decrease after that. The 90s are gonna be about eight bucks, and those will be worth you know, 35 over eight. You're gonna see about a 3x return, so it's gonna decrease. So I think kind of the sweet spot right now for these is, uh, I guess, 80s and 85s. Um, I would wanna see what happens when the stock goes to 87. Um, since we're looking at 85s right now, it's about $10 out of the money. So when it goes to 87, I think probably your sweet spot here is going to be about $80 puts. Um, and I would recommend you that calculation again when you enter the order. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking like $80 puts here should give us about a 6x upside. Um, and that should be a, a pretty damn good trade. Stop loss on this trade is really, really simple. Um, basically, all you want to do is you want to 
you want to get in the trade when it breaks out, which is why we want to give it a little bit of more room. Right now it's at 97. I want to see it go all the way down to like 87 or something a little bit lower, just so that we have this room here to actually validate the setup. Um, and then as soon as it's dropped out, you pretty much want to set your stop loss like here um, or near the bottom here. You don't want to see it retrace uh, into, you don't want to see it retrace into the flag, you don't want to see it retrace into this wedge. You want it to stay out of here and you want it to stay down here. Um, and, and that's and basically what you're looking for. It's a quick drop and you want it to stay down. Um, and if it doesn't stay down, if it starts to bounce back up, which is unlikely, but if it does start to bounce back up, that's when you would want to stop out. Um, I would say max loss on this trade should be about 40%, um, just based off of losing about $6 in value on the options. That should lead to a change of uh, a give or take three bucks in the underlying price, I believe. Um, if you look at the um, three dollar out of the ten dollar out of the monies are seven, ten dollar in the monies are fourteen. So that's about a four dollar difference um, on the bid side. And so I think that's kind of what you're going to see here. So you got about a forty percent risk on your initial investment uh, when you enter this trade, uh, which I think is pretty reasonable considering that you have about a six x potential upside on this. Uh, so I think that's probably the play here with EA. Uh, you just want to see him drop a little bit more, below eighty seven, drop out of that wedge, and. Uh, if you wanted to do that, I really, really like this position. Um, September's are going to give you the most time for it to work out. Uh, you can get June's if you're aggressive, uh, April's if you're crazy, and um, you know you can spread out your time frames. Uh, but I, I, I do like kind of the, the August ones uh, or the September ones. Uh, September is after August, I'm pretty sure. So uh, I think that's probably going to give you a, a good chunk of time for it to work itself out for the coronavirus to really become a pain in everybody's neck and uh, to turn into a reality. It's a pretty simple play here, just based off of this uh, bear flag and uh, it breaking out of this bear flag. So the moment this thing hits like 87, um, yeah, I'm gonna be snapping up some puts on here and uh, I'm gonna be really happy about it too. So uh, I think that's that's uh, the big takeaway and the big play with EA. It's got a, kinda got like this temporary recession, this temporary decline in the stock price. Um, you know, it's not pretty, uh, and it'll likely recover. You know, this stock has gone through many crashes, it looks like, um, and they've recovered from many crashes before, but I mean, shit, dude, I'm still gonna take my money and profit from the crash, and then, you know, you could buy the stock later on after you make all your money on the downside and wait for it to go up in the long term. Um, but for right now, in the short term, I mean, not in the short, I mean, just in the medium term, um, this, is, this is a pretty, pretty uh, clear, kind of fairish play, assuming it validates the setup. Um, and obviously set a stop loss on it in case it, it, it retraces and fails. But um, I mean, this is a pretty, this is a textbook bull flag, or a bear flag. Uh, hopefully it's not a bull flag, this would be not good. Um, but I mean, yeah, it's, it's a, a pretty straight, straightforward kind of kind of investment here with EA, uh, which is actually pretty sweet, kind of exciting. And afterwards, um, you know, once it hits 50 or, or 52 or 55 or whatever, once it gets down to this moving average, um, you know, then maybe in like a couple of years, maybe in like three or four years, you could buy the stock for the long term and uh, expect it to do well. If you're looking at buying this in the long term, or maybe you're watching this a long time after this actually happened, the thing I would watch for more than anything else is a monthly MACD crossover. Um, the last time when they had this big drop, they crossed over on the MACD. It took them forever and ever and ever. So I would look for not a first crossover on the monthly MACD, but I would look for a, a crossover and then a fail and then a second crossover on the monthly MACD, just like they did after 08. Um, I think this is going to take a couple of years to rebound, minimum uh, probably three to four years conservatively or, or aggressively. I mean, it, it, these guys are going down and uh, it's going to be a hard fall. Uh, the revenue will probably go down by about 30%. Um, that's kind of aggressive. I don't know what the revenue looks like during these years, um, but I, I really don't care. I just care about the stock price. And um, just from the looks of it, th this company is, uh, is in for some, some bumpy times, it looks like, uh, especially considering someone just sold the hell out of these guys up here. Um, I'm pretty damn confident in this position and uh, pretty excited about it too. So I have to be the biggest take on the product. Hey, this is John. I want to thank you so much for making it to the end of the video and hope you get a ton of value from the stock that we just broke down and hopefully learned a lot about them. Now, what's cool is if you have an investment that you think it looks really, really nice, or maybe it's a potential investment that you're on the edge about, or maybe it's a stock that you're holding right now that you're just a little bit curious about, or maybe you want to get an outside perspective on it, what's cool is if you leave a comment down below with the ticker of the stock, I'll actually put it in Queen uh, for a potential new video coming out. Now, make sure you also subscribe so that when those new videos do come out or when these new stocks do come out, um, you'll be able to get YouTube will know to send you the
this stuff, and if you click the bell, you'll actually directly get a notification so that you don't miss any of the new investments that we break down on this channel. Now, what's also cool is if you want to learn how to outperform 99% of investors and radically limit your downside, even if you can't pass a finance test for your life or have nothing to start with but a few spare bucks, I want you to open up a new tab right now or go to a new browser, wherever you are, um, and I want you to go to stockmarketsecretsexposed.com. And inside Stock Market Secrets Exposed, you get instant access to a course I used to sell for thousands, a very, very high level seminar I gave. Um, the students literally go through and in their first month make five, six years, and I can't guarantee anything, uh, but I know for a fact that this, this stuff works and it, it's, it's gold. What I want to do is I want to give you this course to sell tons, tons, tons. I want to give it to you completely for free so you can learn the top 35 secrets that you can use uh, within the next week to really, really crush your portfolio, really double it uh, and radically limit that downside. So if you want instant access to that, what you got to do right now is open up a new browser tab and go to stockmarketsecretsexposed.com and I'll send it to you for free. Okay? Sound cool? Sound fair? Thank you again so much for watching and I will see you either in another video on here or over in the, the master class. Thanks. Bye.